Here's Brody Brazil. I mean, I feel like with the, the whole, you know, roster situation, it's like, how do I feel as an A's fan as somebody who, you know, has to go through a lot of these trades usually happening this time of year? I mean, it's you, it happens every year where we lose most of our good players. And I know Matt Olson rumblings were going on right before the lockout hit. They uh, still are. <laughs> yeah, they still are. And yeah. It's like, I remember seeing things like Matt Olson to the Yankees this week, and then the you know the lockout happens, and it's, yeah. so it's like, I don't know how to feel. It's like, is Matt Olson going to be, or a guy like not just Matt Olson, but like our you know our staple players, of are course, they be intact. Yeah, I sure. think just, I think this lockout has a bigger effect on a team like the A's who have a lot of questions surrounding their personnel for next year. You know, uh, fans are generally. Not thrilled with the lockout of potential of the season not happening on time, but A's fans are especially on edge because there's so much hinging on how this lockout gets resolved. Okay, now what does it mean yeah. for this team's future, their budget, their planning, the players that they may trade now, may trade later, may may sign now? Because if there's a salary cap floor and you have to spend a certain dollar amount every year, well, why wouldn't you want to give that money to Matty O or, or Matt Chapman or Sean right. Manaya or Chris Bassett, whoever? So um, there's a lot to be to be figured out with this, and I don't mean just with the lockout. I mean how it relates and how it affects the Oakland A's. I think A's fans should should be kind of like edgy about this whole thing because – you don't know what it's going to mean for your team, but you know it's going to mean something pivotal for your team. Kind of like the stadium. It's right around yeah. the corner, and when it happens, what does it mean for your team? Lockout's the same way. What does it mean for this team in the next couple of years? So, For sure. Yeah, and I mean, I think the salary cap floor thing, back to your point, it's just like I remember seeing you know sor- sources uh, report that the A's might go as low as $50 million, and it's just, you know, how long can we do this for? So I, I you know, I'm just hoping, like, I, like you said, on edge about the yeah. whole situation, anxious. Well, what so if what like if we need to keep it together? What if they said the salary cap floor, and I'm I'm just making up something. What if they said the floor is uh, 91 million, which is crazy because the <laughs> the ceil- yeah. this that's greater than the ceiling of hockey. Uh, but what if they what if they said it was 91 million? Okay, and you're to your point, you have to spend now. You have to spend an extra 30 or 40 million bucks this next year. What do you do? Well, I know what you do. <laughs> you you yeah. give it to your first yeah, and third baseman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I know that, I mean, I think honestly with that kind of money, the A's could be a, a, a deep playoff team considering that this year they hardly missed the playoffs and they had an 80 or so million dollar payroll. So yeah. I think that's a great point you brought up and it's just your salary cap as well, because not that wouldn't necessarily directly benefit the A's, but it would, prohibit teams like the Dodgers spending 300 million. So, right, right. Yeah, that's a great point. Right. Well, and that's yeah. the thing, right? If you're going to go hard cap, it's not just the potential floor. You're right, it's the potential upper limit too, which doesn't let you exceed that. And I also think one more thing, and I know you'll appreciate this on the A's, you know, if you really are yeah. if you really know you're going to get this Howard Terminal in a couple years, if you really know that for sure, you can start to plan your next cycle of players based around that. Um now, yeah, granted, sure. I've, I've always hoped that Matt Chapman and Matt Olson are there on opening day. They're a huge part of that team. But, but I mean, if this stadium doesn't open until 2027, well, guess what? They debuted in Major League Baseball in 2017. <laughs> They're 10-year <laughs> yeah. veterans at that point. So, I mean, it, right. you got to be realistic and say, okay, this, th- this stadium is not going to happen in 2024. It's just not. So... Um, yeah. Back in 2017, if if you thought 24, okay, great, Chappie and Ole in their prime, but it may not work out to be that way. So uh, the lockout, right. the lockout yeah. affecting the A's, the stadium affected. There, there is so much up up in the air with this team right now. 